gave me, well, what is it, Mike? I said, man, dude, I'll be sitting around or driving my wife and kids sometimes, and the road would twinkle or, or swerve, and I'd swerve a little bit until my wife smacks me. And then they'd wake me up, and then I'd pull over. She said, what is wrong with you? I said, baby, I have no idea. This has been happening for a while, but it's like lasting a little longer now. It lasts like 10 seconds. And so I'm telling my brother about these things. He said, well, Mike, he said, man, you've been doing these feats, two by fours, running through all these power strokes and everything else and hitting things, breaking things, handcuff breaks. He said, man, I believe you need to lay off. I said, what am I supposed to do, brother? And my brother's supervisor for Powerline, Exxon Mobile Chemical. He said, I'll put you to work. I got a shutdown coming. I said, you going to put me to work? He said, yeah, you called John, ja- John right now, John Jacobs. And so I did. I went to my phone and called John. I said, John, I appreciate it, man. It's been awesome, powerful. The souls has been touched. The things that I've seen of God's power is so beautiful and so awesome. I said, but my brother's going to put me to work, man. And I got to stay home with my kids and my wife. And it was all a reason. It was so powerful, so beautiful. He said, I understand, Mike. That's cool. I said, bless you, brother. And that was it. Next week, I got ready, went off to Exxon Mobil. Went off in the power lines up in the buckets, 40 feet in the air. And this went on for about six months. And every once in a while, I go to my brother. And Nick, my nephew, buddy's son, he'll be in the bucket with me. And Nick would be talking to me. Uncle Mike. Wasn't even hearing. I'm going through a delusion or something. And he hit me. So what? He said, you can't hear me? He said, sorry, Nick. I'm going through one of them things again. And this went on for seven months until this. We was up 40 feet in the air, and I was reaching out to grab a three, 350 gauge uh, power line. We're changing out things, and I reached out to grab, and that was it. I fell out, and Nick caught me, brought me back in, got me down, took 10 men to get me out. They called the helicopter caught the flight in. They said, y'all got to come get this one right here. Critical condition. Fell out. All of a sudden, by the time the 10 guys got me out of the thing, the ambulance had pulled up and they got me off inside. And it was so cool because I used to pray and ask, ask the Father, I said, Father, I want this peace again that I once had. And I used to tell my wife about these things because of having these things like this, sometimes I'd go off. I, I couldn't understand why I figured it out. And my, my, my wife remembers this because it was so cool. All of a sudden, I'm in that ambulance and they got me back. And as soon as I opened my eyes, it's like I felt that peace that I had when it was me and God in them cell rooms. And I had this grin on my face, and this dude was sitting beside me was looking at me real funny. He said, you okay? How many fingers do I got? I was naming off to him. I said, yeah, brother, it is so cool. I feel this of what I once prayed for again. He said, what is it? I said, the presence of God. He's like, okay. But it was so cool. All of a sudden, they brought me in Beaumont at hospital. They did an MRI on me, and they got me, got me out. Once they got me out of the MRI, the doctor came in there and said, we can't handle this one. Y'all got to get it in Houston now and quick. All of a sudden, this is when my wife pulls up. She got in the ambulance with me, and she's crying her eyes out. My brother's following behind us, and this guy on the left side of me, I said, brother, I'm sorry, man. My wife is kind of worried. And I was like hollering, baby, it's okay. I got that piece. She just still whimpered a little bit, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, we get all the way to Houston, and they did another MRI, and the doctor comes in and looks at me and looks at my brother and my wife and my sister. He says, sir, ma'am, this will be a critical one, and we got to go in now to get it out. And the chances are on these right here that we deal with right here, some make it, some don't, some goes into comas. Because his is the size of a half softball, pushing the brain, two different types of cancers, pushing the brain in. And I was like, it's so much peace, man. My wife was like worried. And I said, baby, it's going to be okay. I got faith that surpasses all understanding, the faith. That is my God is so beautiful and awesome. It's like she wants to say, shut up. But it's so very true. 
And as I say, my sister and my brother, we started praying that the doctor's going to guide this doctor's hands. And he said it'll probably, he'll, be, he'll probably be out about 14 and a half hours through that surgery. And all of a sudden he said, I'll leave you alone for right now. And he did. And we went to praying, believing. All of a sudden when they come in to get me, they take me in. A 14 and a half hour surgery. They wheel me back in. And all of a sudden, within one hour, opened my eyes. And I still felt that presence. That ain't all I felt. I said, man, I am hairy. <laughs> my wife looks at me. She goes, you ain't supposed to do this. I said, girl, I got to shave this off my face. I got up out of bed, walked turned around, went to the bathroom, restroom, started shaving. This nurse comes in, looks at that bed. It's empty. She freaks out. Where'd he go? She pointed. He's in there shaving. What? Lady worked there 20 years and never seen nothing like it. She come to you okay? I said, yeah, I'm just hairy. <laughs> and she, is, she's a, she was a Arab as well, and the doctor was too, which ain't dog them, you know what I mean, but there was, they weren't in the belief of that area in that zone that I was. And she said, are you sure all right? I said, yes, sister, God is good. And I'm shouting this, and she's like tripping. And all of a sudden, she walks out the door. She goes to get the doctor. The doctor comes in, Mike. I said, yes. How many fingers I got? What is this? What is this? What is this? Huh? I asked all these questions. I'm naming them off left and right. Are you okay? I said, brother, I'm blessed. I'm healed. And he looked at me with this look. And I said, you know why? Because my God was guiding your hand. And he looked at me with that look. He said, Mike, if you're acting like this in three days, you can go home. I said, that's what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, it was really cool because he said, in one month, we're going to see you back. And we want to do another MRI to check it because we didn't get everything out. What we're going to have to do is take a laser. We can go with the new style they come out with the laser. And they'll beam down through the laser and burn the rest, burn the seal around it. Or they'll burn it out or put me in that whatever thing it is, the bag or whatever, and you lose all your hair, bless their hearts. And they do these things like this. We'll do that. We'll check it out within 30 days. All of a sudden... So in 30 days, me and my wife shows up, did another MRI. He said, I'll let you know in two days how it turns out and what we're going to need to do, what we need to do next. I said, okay. So we leave. Get home. I'm into working out in the yard, man, and getting lightly in the gym and this and that. And uh, constantly steady, studying the Word. It's really cool. And, and things like this. And it's really cool that two days passed by, didn't hear nothing. Five days, Nothing. 11 days and my wife was like freaking out, really getting mad. I said, well, girl, it sounds good to me. They ain't going to call me for no emergency. She goes, no. He said he'd call back in two days. I said, come on, baby. All of a sudden, the next night at 8 o'clock, this doctor calls from Houston. And we're in the room doing a Bible study, me and my wife and children. And he calls. And she answers the phone. And he said, ma'am, this is the doctor but I have no idea what to tell you because that one that with the MRI we did, there's nothing left. And it was so beautiful. You tell me we don't serve a mighty awesome God because that's the way we ought to do it everywhere we go, everywhere we stand, everywhere we speak. As for me and my house, we're going to serve Jesus.